gentlemen. Good morning. I hope everyone can hear me. It is an honor. Media Forum, and it is indeed a privilege to be included in this distinguished panel members that we have today for you as we begin the conference this morning. And the theme of our opening session is on Asia rising. We think about the story of China and India. Clearly, the timing could not have been better for us to be here today to discuss some of the issues ahead and the way forward. Well, if you think about it, by 2025, India's share of the world GDP will have risen from 6 to 13 percent, making it the third largest economy in the world. China by that time will have become the largest economy and together India and China will account for nearly 39% share of the global output, about equal to the present share of the United States and Europe combined. So these are very distinct numbers that puts the perspective in our discussion this morning as we look ahead toward 2025. If you think about the names that we've been hearing in the last a few years that reflect China and India in many ways. Think of the names that come side by side, like Lenovo and IBM, Metal and Arcelor, Tata Motors and Range Rover and Jaguar, Geely and Volvo. Think about Tato, uh, Tata and Nano. Think about Huawei and few other companies that have emerged as leaders in their respective products and in the recent times. I think some of members that have been discussing about China and India rising, I think they have been calling or, or introducing a new term uh, that we should call it Chindia because of so much focus that's been recently uh, uh, received by them. I think the, the, the term Chindia was coined by the Indian Minister of State for Commerce, uh, Jairam Ramesh, and also it was mentioned in Jagdish, uh, Shet, uh, the author that wrote so much about A India and Asia rising in his book, also uh, called Chindia. I think there are a lot of issues. We, I don't want to go through a long introduction about our session, but some of the things that we need to focus on from the media, some of the statistics that sometimes we'd, we'd, it'd be good to remember, when, if we ask ourselves in terms of the media print, which English language newspaper has the largest circulation in the world? And that's the Times of India. Which non-English language newspaper sells millions of copies daily? That's Japan, Asahi, Shimbom and the Malayalam Manoroma from Kerala, India, followed closely by the Chinese language edition of the Workers' Daily. So you can see when you look at the media itself, you know, the, the range and, and the volume of the print itself. Which magazine has mushrooms the world's largest media conglomerate? That's India today. Media in, in Chindia has certainly arrived without, you know, without a lot of fanfare, and certainly this is the time that we have today that we can focus on some of the issues that I think it will set the tone for the rest of the, of the period ahead. What we'd like to do in this session and the panel members to focus on is what explains the dramatic growth? How do we explain this? What challenges does the rapid growth of Western media represent on the culture? And also we want to talk about, about the growth itself and the role of the regional media. Why do some Asian societies seem more receptive to media scrutiny than others? That's another topic that seems to also be 
very much in the discussion as of late. To begin our discussion today, I think we're, I would like to introduce the panels and what I will do is I'll introduce them as they start one by one rather than giving it a whole list in, altogether. I think it would be, be better for, for all of you. Uh, we will start today by Mr. Andrew Malcolm, former member of the editorial board Los Angeles Times and the chief political blogger top of the ticket uh, Los Angeles Times blog and I think we're fortunate that with 26 years of experience uh, as a foreign and national correspondent he's here today with us and uh, just to give you a few lines about the background he has also contributed as an assistant national editor and a columnist earlier he was the executive assistant and director of communication for the governor of Montana from 93 to 99 he has also uh, w uh, worked as a deputy campaign communication manager for George Bush and as a press sec secretary to Laura Bush from 99 to 2001, author of over 10 uh, non-fictional books. Mal Malcolm is also is a Pulitzer, Pulitzer, is a Pulitzer Prize finalist uh, for editorial writing in 2004. So indeed, it's, we are privileged to have him here. Please join me to welcome Mr. Andrew Malcolm. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that generous introduction. My family would not believe you. <laughs> um, Sabah al-Khair. I, I must apologize for my California accent in Arabic. But I am honored to be here today uh, to talk about the media, which uh, is in uh, serious trouble domestically in the United States, but is playing an increasingly crucial role in the developing world. The Americans, unfortunately, uh, are often so self-centered that uh, they pay insufficient attention to the rest of the world. And when they do, they look at subjects that are of general interest to them as opposed to subjects that are of crucial importance to the other country. I was also, as you mentioned, sir, uh, involved in uh, public relations and communications in government and politics. And I know there that the responsibility lies on delivering a message on the sender of the message. 